Hey, I'm Martin Raymond, and I'm the environment artist and art director here at Oddbox Studio. We've been developing with Unity for the last six years, and we're currently working on our 2D action RPG, Tales of Iron. Previously, we worked on our first game, The Lost Bear, which was a 2D VR platformer for the PSVR and Oculus Rift, which was also developed using Unity. Today I'm going to talk to you about my development process of crafting a scene, focusing mainly on Unity's new 2D light system and our own tools that help us create the environments in the world of Tales of Iron. So let's begin! Tales of Iron is made up of many different levels like the Crimson Keep or the Rat Village. The player can navigate mostly freely from one scene to the next via entrances like doors or tunnels. I will show you how these scenes are made and what goes into making it from concept stage to polish. Every scene creation begins with the collider tool, which Jack, our level designer, places as the foundation of the level. It creates boundaries for the player, gives a general shape of the scene, and it is the surface that the player walks on. This collider line is then used as the guide for me to sketch out a few compositions and ideas to create a batch of assets and start placing them into the scene. But before assets can be placed, the scene needs to be set up with our light and layer sorting tool that Matt Taylor, our lead programmer, made for us. The objective of this tool is to be able to easily manage the sprite asset sorting ordering and the lighting of the game. This is crucial to handle for Tales of Iron as we build our levels with great detail using a large quantity of separate sprite assets to create parallax levels. We achieve this by dividing the section into multiple subdivision layer categories like foreground, midground and background. Once we have defined our layers, this tool will then gather all of the sprite renderers in the scene section, which you can then sort from closest to furthest based on the zip depth of each asset in the level section. Once this list has been generated, the tool will then begin to assign sort of values in a linear fashion through the list. This ensures that no asset that is behind another will render in the incorrect order. Once this step is completed, the tool will then begin to assign a layer based on the previously defined subdivisions in the scene. This is used to define which sprite renders should, affect, should be affected by which specific 2D light. These two processes combined helped us create large detailed parallax levels with specific lighting scenarios per layer. Whenever I start a new level in the game, I create a library of assets into multiple atlases for that level, so that I can then pick out and use them in the scenes. Having assets tied to specific levels greatly helps with optimization. Atlases are divided into categories like rocks, trees and small assets. So first, I usually start with placing the midground assets to basically outline the colliders and reinforce the surfaces of the scene. I then place a few assets into the foreground and background so that I can set up the light tool to work properly. After that, I continue with placing the big assets like trees, rocks and hills to create a good composition and then add smaller and smaller details. With each pass of assets, I push the sort button in the light tool and assets get properly assigned and rendered at the correct depth. Placing assets is sometimes like a big 3D puzzle. It can be challenging trying to find the right shapes to create the scene and composition I have in mind while making it readable by the player. I try to make each scene unique from one another. This helps in navigating the world as hopefully each scene becomes memorable with unique landmarks or assets. When placing assets in different depths, a parallax effect instantly becomes noticeable as the player and the perspective camera following him runs through the scene. This can be exaggerated by placing the assets further apart in the Z or closer to the camera. I like to keep assets closest to the camera darker or entirely black, as this creates a nice border near the edges of the screen and reinforces depth. Another great feature of our light tool is that it instantly creates artificial depth by, f by fading the colour of each subdivision layer as it goes back near the horizon. With our light tool, I can adjust the density and also set the global light colour of a and volume of that fade. This creates a nice optimised illusion of a fading horizon and atmospheric fog. This combined with the latter added lights and particles can create drastically different moods in the scenes.
Once the scene has been filled with some assets, it's time to put in lights to really set the mood and highlight the important parts of the scene. This is why I started using the new Unity 2D lights as they fit straight into our custom light tool workflow. Before we started using the new Unity 2D lights, I would use 2D spotlights and point lights to light the scenes, which worked at the time, but were not well optimized for a 2D game with so many layers and parallax. We adapted the 2D Unity light system to fit the purpose of a multi-layered parallax 2D game. Each 2D light will determine its own layer based on its z-depth in the scene, using the manually defined subdivision layers previously mentioned to determine which layer it belongs to or I can manually set which layer the 2D light will affect. The 2D lights in each section will automatically be able to light up sprites correctly and only affect the sprites, the layer it is inside of. So that means I can be very specific when placing lights and for example have a stronger point light lighting up the midground as well as the characters and lights in the background that are a bit more faded to put a focus on the midground. That was not possible before with the 3D lights as they did not recognize the individual layers and would light up the entire parallax level at once. There are many different ways I can use this layered light system. For example, I can create cool silhouette scenes where I place a light in the background and assign it to only affect the background layers and then only have very dim light in the midground and foreground layer. Or I can have light behind a window or a doorway to create a nice atmosphere. There are mainly three different light types that I use. Point light, freeform and sprite. The point light is the most used because it's basically just a 2D circle that I can quickly place around to highlight important assets or create artificial shadows. The point light is great because it's so versatile with its options. I can use it as a misty glow in the background by increasing the volume opacity or use it as a glow from a lamp by tweaking the fall off intensity of the light. Another light type that I use is the freeform light. That one I mainly use when wanting to put a strong light source on a specifically shaped asset, like a window. I can just trace the shape of the asset, tweak the fall off and set the light on the exact depth of the asset. That will make it look like it's emitting light. The other light type is the sprite light, which allows me to set a specific asset to project as the light itself. I mainly use this on light beams that have a textured light source. This can be placed and rotated in the scene to show the light coming from different angles. With a combination of different light types, I can create scenes where the characters can pass through the light and be illuminated in interesting ways. Once the scene is nicely lit up, I can start polishing it by placing particle effects to bring in some movement and divide up some of the messy looking areas. First is a simple particle fog. I just place it in the correct zip depth and set it to render in on the correct layer subdivision. The fog is great to separate the individual layers visually to create more depth and divide the layers up. Placing the fog in the front of the midground also grounds the characters in the world a bit more. Finally, it's also nice to have the fog moving slightly in the direction that the player is meant to go. Next, I usually add some atmospheric effects like dust specks, rain or falling leaves, depending on the scene. It's nice to place those closer to the camera to create stronger parallax. The rain effect is a combination of falling water droplets and a particle of animated water splashes placed on the ground. These particles, like almost every other asset, is designed its layers so that it looks right with the parallax. If the scene has tall grass, flowers or trees, it's nice to give it some life or movement. So Matt once again made us a great tool that converts all selected foliage sprite shaders in the scene into a special shader that animates them together in the wind. I can then individually adjust the values of each asset. The tree leaves are placed in different sized leaf chunks around the tree top as to make the movement more natural. Finally, this scene is tied together with some color processing and a vignette. I use our custom tool to draw a box over the area of the scene that I want the post-processing to affect. 
I can just drag it over the entire scene or have multiple different ones in the scene that blend as the player is walking through. This with a combination of the differently coloured lights and fade colour can create different atmospheres for the levels. When a scene has multiple different states, like day or night, I create a folder in that scene with all the lights, assets, filters that get turned on or off in the game. And that's pretty much it for how I create scenes in Tales of Iron. I usually go through one, two or three passes polishing the assets, placements and everything until I'm happy with the scene and everything is readable and nice. And that's everything. Hopefully you've gained some insight into Unity's new 2D light system and how it can be used to create interesting and atmospheric scenes within your game. Unity also has a demo scene available for download which will allow you to get your hands on the new tools. We always love to hear from you. And if you want more information on Tales of Iron and our development process, then please follow us over on Twitter at Oddbox Studio. Thanks for watching and have a great day.